Hey, welcome back to Evil's Comics. This guy right here is Evil Mike, or Mike if you prefer. And I got a review for you today. We're going to be talking about Batman Spawn. Um, it is written by Todd McFarlane, arts by Greg Capullo, inks by Todd McFarlane, colors by Dave McCraig, and letters by Todd Nap uh, Tom Napolino. Um, before we get started, please like, comment, and subscribe. Um, that really does help this channel, uh, gives me feedback, that kind of thing. Um, hit that bell if you're so inclined, if you like the storytelling, that kind of stuff, my reviews. Um, I do have a couple small complaints that I'll get into at the end of the review, but let's get into it. Um, a couple key things to note, since this is Capullo's art, it is set in the 52 um, like storyline during that Batman run. Um, and there's a couple key thing. I mean, like... That you can know that says that. Um, another thing is this book plays off of this being the first time Batman and Spawn have met. They act like that. The and it's kind of weird because this is the anniversary issue, but of that said comic. But you know, back in the '90s when we got that comic, Batman and Spawn met. In this comic, that they're they're acting like that never happened. Um, so it starts out and it's basically Spawn talking about he's being sent for to find this black beast. Um, he's talking about that the beast that he's after has a similar origin story to him even though there are some differences like Bruce is born from wealth, Al Simmons was born from poverty, but their stories nonetheless are still very similar. Um, this book does um, state that their origin stories happen on the same day, June 26th, which if you read the comics, that is not a true story, but the comic is using that. Now, I'm not saying they're taking liberties, they're not changing anything, and we'll get there. Um, Spawn is also told that, he, that this Black Beast has a number of super-powered villains that, that are always around him that he's going to have to actually you know, fight to get to this guy. Um, and basically, like, it's a lot of like conversation about like Al Simmons thinking about his deceased wife and he wants to go meet her. He mentions that there is this place called the Void between Heaven and Hell and he goes there, you know, wishing to see Wanda. Um, after he has been told that if he wants to find Wanda that he would have to find the Black Beast. Um, the book does start out with a timetable. They give us this five hour um, marker and then at this point uh, we catch up with Bruce Wayne in Gotham City and it's the anniversary of his parents death. Um, Alfred kind of comes down and consoles Bruce um, kind of states that you know it's never a fan of this day and what Bruce really has to go through on that day. Um, Bruce always stating that he's fine kind of thing um, and as this happens the bass signal goes up Alfred's kind of sad because he didn't want you know Bruce to go out on that day um, but Batman nonetheless heads out he gets to a scene um, incidentally in Crime Alley when he gets there and he is greeted by one of the Court of Owls and the Court of Owls starts questioning him about that day in question about the murder of his parents and he also mentioned that the Court of Owls didn't just make Batman that day that they also helped make Spawn that day. Um, the Court of Owls like after like standing there for a second and talking to Bruce like um, and not Bruce but Batman but Batman specific, like strikes out violently and the Court of Owls guy just disappears and then magically like turns up behind him. At this time he starts questioning Batman about did he know about the pearls that Martha was actually holding and um, what was inside them. He said that Martha never knew but Thomas did. Um, and at this point instructing Batman to take the pearls which he does and as he does he snaps them. After he snaps them it's almost like a magical like portal or whatever because the Court of Owl guy turns into an actual owl and then all of a sudden Al Simmons spawn is there and he just lays the whoop down on Batman because he has found his black beast he believes that Batman has um, Wanda Blake's soul and he comes with all his magic and powers and everything and as soon as he sees Batman he just beats the crap at him 
as this as the fight's going down, they get to this one point where Spawn steps into the section, as you can see here, and all his powers disappear. It's kind of like this light and dark type situation, and they call it like part of the void. When it happens, Spawn loses his powers, and when this happened, Batman instantly realizes what goes down, and Batman lays the same beating that Spawn just gave him. Um, we can see in the background that the Court of Owls people are watching and that this is all part of their plan. They also do mention that that Bruce Wayne is vitally important for some plan they have going forth. Um, during the fight they also mention that they are kind of trying to bring spawns like legion of you know villains and monsters and stuff like that into Batman's universe kind of thing. Um, during the fight, it gets to a point where it goes back and forth with Batman and Spawn, you know, both landing their blows and both dealing their damage, but um, <clears throat> it does get to a stalemate where they both, you know, Batman's on his side of the light and Spawn's, you know, on his side where he has his powers, and Batman's like, hey, you know, this whole time we've been being watched, and they kind of show, you know, somebody in in the back, you know, in the, it's the Court of Owl guy in the alley. But basically, um, you know, Batman's like, hey, we're being watched, uh, we need to talk, and, and you know, Spawn's like, no, and Batman's like, yeah, man, and, and ba basically, like, <clears throat> you know, after some, you know, after some negation, Batman's like, look, if I, if I was like, if this was some kind of ploy or whatever, look, and he just steps forward, and he's like, if you want, kill me. He was like, but we need to talk. Someone's manipulating both of us. The book jumps over and we follow, like, um, it's basically the leader of the Court of Owls or, you know, one of the higher-ups of the Court of Owls. And he comes in this room and they're basically like, you know, the, has Batman, have you retrieved the device, you know, and you know, Batman's the key to open this portal. Um, we get to meet this new Talon. They never really give him a name or anything like that. It's just a, like, powered-up Talon, one of their zombie you know basically um, but basically they state that after tonight they're gonna have Batman and his soul and blah 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 um, we jump over to Batman and Spawn in the Batcave and Batman and Spawn are trying to figure out what's going on and and basically they, they deduced you know kind of both sides of their stories you know Batman talking about him being human and how it makes him better and he talks about his greatest weapon as his brain um, also the wild you know deducing crimes and stuff like that Batman uses his you know the fear technique and stuff like that Spawn kind of like laughs and he's all like you know I used to be human and he's like but you know this changes me kind of I mean they change me and they'll do the same to your world and he was like if any one of these monsters makes it over they're, they're just gonna annihilate you he was like look I give you credit he was like you're a badass but he was like without any physical powers he was all like you, he was like you're toast he was like in my, in my future he was like they took out Superman first you know why because they did they weren't they weren't afraid of him he was like and they don't take out you first but they're not exactly scared of you um, Alfred kind of mentions that he like spawns crazy and he just don't know what he's talking about um, but Batman did get a call that night so Batman's like well you're about to meet you know some of my you know evilness and stuff like that and maybe we'll get some more clues on to what's going on they do follow up and incidentally Joker went on a killing spree and they show you some of his evilness um, and one of the key factors this is set during the uh, 52 run because Joker's appearance but we catch up with Joker and basically they come into this conversation but instantly Joker knows that Batman is in his room and incidentally he also knows that spawns there even though spawns like magically hidden um, the conversation goes down where like Joker's like trying to talk to Batman but also like asking questions about spawn uh, Joker at this point does know a little more about spawn than he's leading on and we kind of find out very soon you know why but basically he kind of mentions that he's a lot like 
you know Al Simmons than than he knows. <laughs> Um, there is a funny moment where Spawling gets all pissed off and he's like, stop playing your games, you know. And Joker's all about, like, he's trying to convince him that he wants this to be normal, that he wants them to take out the Court of Owls so everything can go back to the way it was, you know. And this is his version of normal over here. But um, with their newfound information, they end up leaving. As soon as they leave, you see right here that there is... That's, you know, Joker is working with either the Violator or Malbolgia or both, or you know, because there's all these little like Violator clown demons. Um, but Joker mentioning that, that that there's more plans basically. Um, so Spawn and Batman get ready for the battle at hand with the Court of Owls and Talon. Um, Batman kind of you know gets ready for the battle and he's basically like asking Spawn about his you know deceased wife what was her name Wanda Blake and he's like he mentions when he brings it up you know to remember it internal the lights kind of thing and Spawn's kind of confused about it but they get down here and basically they show like Talon crouching up on the on the the pearl that supposedly has the device um, they do show in the background how like the Court of Owls is like oh okay you found the pearl do you have Batman and Talon's like no they show that Batman and Spawn are preparing, making like these gas grenades or something like that. During that conversation, when they're asking if Batman, you know, has been taking, um, and they're, and it's the Court of Owls leader and Talon, and he's basically like, "Do you have Batman not yet?" And as that happens, Spawn kind of just magically appears in the room, grabs the Court of the Owl, you know, Court of Owls guys, and then he's like, "Hey, I got your leader. If you want him back." you'll come to this location, bye, you know, and he, and he dips out magically. Um, at this point, they both head to the location, and then they get ready. Spawn lays down the spoke grenades, and they end up fighting uh, Talon. Talon basically has the upper hand on Batman, like, the entire time, striking first blood right off the bat. Um, but, I guess Talon forgetting about Spawn at the moment, but Spawn's like, hey, he has gone, you know. And he turns on the lights. When he turns on the lights, it's actually they're they're fighting outside Arkham Asylum with all the asylum inmates watching from from inside. Um, at this point, Spawn like releases the Court of Owls guy. It kind of knocks off his mask, so he's just plain plain guy right now. But um, as this going, they both they both try to take out Talon, Batman, and Spawn. Um, eventually it gets to the point where Talon actually has to produce like magic and it almost looks like he's got Azrael's sword because it's a fire wielding sword but he does mention at this point that he's that he is using magic and that's when we go all the way back to their origin dates being played with it's been the Court of Owls all along and they're using like magic somehow to alter you know certain things in both of their origin stories to you know play with them um, at this time, like Talon being like pretty much knocked out of the battle by Spawn, but as this happens, that's when the the Court of Owl guy kind of creeps up and he's got one of the Talon like crossbow type things. Um, at this point, this is when the whole like Wanda Blake thing comes up and Batman screams it out. And well, he actually does it during conversation. It's not like a Wanda Blake, you know. It's actually like kind of like coded in conversation and as he does it the lights go out when the lights go out the the court of owl guy does shoot batman in the chest and you see batman go down and cool like shadowy you know art imagery and as soon as he goes down the we see the talon guy get all like happy the court of owls guy is like yeah he's dead and and as soon as that that's done, that's when like Batman gets up and stabs the hell out of the guy and kills him. Um, we quickly find out that it wasn't Batman, it was Spawn just using his magic and he does kill the guy. Um, and basically he states that the reason that he did it was because all the villains were watching in Arkham Asylum and now they saw Batman, you know, when someone pushes him too far, what he'll do. They saw him kill a man. Um, and, and Spawn basically states in the battle that's coming, he's going to need that fear. Um, Batman states that, that he did not like that Spawn did that. At this point, Batman even, even you know, he's not even worried if Talon kills Spawn because he has been deemed a murderer type thing. Um, 
but basically, um, like after at this point, like you know, was like they kind of trick Talon into this one spot as they get him to this one spot, and you know, basically like Spawn teleports behind him and uses his cape and like swallows him up. You can kind of see it right there. Um, and that's the end of that magical, you know, Talon guy. After that, it does say that Bruce wished he took, you know, Spawn took something with him when he disappeared. And, of course, it was Talon or whatever. Um, at the very end, we get this, like, epilogue page. And it's basically like a mix of both worlds. We see the Batman finds a pearl and it's cracked and... And then they, they kind of show us a scene where it's Martha Wayne and I'm trying to remember this guy's name without cheating, but it's Kilgore, the priest. Um, and it just looks like Martha's in, in, in hell. And then it shows like Wanda and she's looking up at the sky and she is in her world, but for some reason there is the bat symbol that shows up. So it just looks like kind of a mix of, of universes. At the very bottom, like very bottom down here, one panel, it says somewhere in the void and it shows the violator and it's it's excellent everything is working exactly as planned and now the next move is mine and that's the end of the book um, so one thing I can state is it's going to be a part two and I'm figuring it's going to be on images side and DC is going to team up with them like they did in the past um, which is great because I thought all this story and all the characters they were kind of introducing was a whole lot especially with the Court of Owls, the Joker um, and we haven't even really gotten into anything Spawn's universe um, those are kind of like my, my, my smaller complaints was um, A, I love the story, the, the art was fantastic it's more along the storyline like, um, supposedly the portal is supposed to be like the portal that, that opens up Spawn's dimension, you know, this and that. Um, I want to say it's some of the liberties that the book is, is, is playing with, that, that like Batman didn't have the pearls, that, that's a main continuity. Um, like, they, they, Batman never inspected the pearls, and you bet you, but he did. Um, especially him being in, in possession of the pearls for so long. Um, but the um, the book does explain why they play around with these things kind of thing. Um, it's not just something that Greg Capullo or Todd McFarlane are trying to change about Batman's origin story or Al Simmons' origin story because they do play with some of the facts in there. Um, but that is my review on this book. I know it's kind of long, but there's a lot that was going on in this book and it seems that they are setting up for something huge in the other book. Um, but like I said, I, I love the read. I want to say right now it's at a good a good status. I'd like to see if it's, I mean, it was stated as a one-shot, so I'm reading it as a one-shot, and as a one-shot, the ending's kind of weird if that's it, right? Um, but that's not it. There's got to be more to this. There's got to be more coming, um, and I'm looking forward to it. Um, that's my review. I'm sticking to it, you know. <laughs> Um, now I want to say the, the story was a little more in the lackluster, you know, I was looking for something like, I don't know, ultra fantastic. One of my small complaint is they went back to the 52 universe. I do love that universe. It's one of my grail runs right now. Um, my grail comic being Batman 1 from the new 52 run. But, um, uh, it's, it's just kind of weird that they picked that error to stick this story in kind of thing. I don't know. But those are my thoughts. Let me know down below what you thought about it. What you thought about the art, story, anything. You let me know down below because I want to hear about it. Alright guys, that's my review. I'll let y'all go. Um, I might have another one coming. I'm not sure. I'm running out of time. Alright guys. Blah!